Welcome back everybody. In today's video I'm going to show you how to turn your Juiced Bike 13 amp hour battery into a 15.6 amp hour battery for $50. Just a little warning though, this will void your battery's warranty. One other thing to remember is it's always better to do this modification before you get too many cycles on your battery pack. I would say less than 100 you're probably okay. I haven't got any cycles on this battery pack yet at all so it's just perfect the less the better tools you need for the job number one phillips screwdriver number two flathead screwdriver number three plastic knife number four 60 amp minimum solder iron with flux and electrical solder number five a razor blade number six nickel strip or you could use 18 gauge wire and flat brass number seven insulation paper or just some thick ass paper works just fine. Number eight, masking tape or Kapton tape. And the last thing you're gonna need is a hot glue gun. And another thing that's important is having a clear, well lit area to do your work. Preferably in a spot where you can sit down because this is gonna take a while. We're gonna take our time, we're gonna do a real good job. And one of the most important things you're gonna need is 14 LG M26 18650 cells. I'll put a link in the description for everything I possibly can. For this voltmeter, it needs to be on the DC side, which is white on this one, and set at 20 because it's below 20 volts. Okay, and we're getting 3.61, which is perfect. So you're going to go through all 14 of those cells, and you're going to make sure all 14 of them are fairly close. They could be off a little bit, but you just don't want any that are dead. You don't want any below like 3.5. They should all be really pretty close, honestly. Okay, so let's say they all test out around 3.61. We'll say 3.6. So we're going to take our calculator and we're going to go 3.6 times 14. So we got 50.4 volts is what 14 of these in series would be. So now let's check the battery and see what that's at. See how it shows a negative on that gauge? That means I got these backwards. So we're showing 54 volts. This pack has 54 volts, and these cells have 50.4 volts. So you might want to bring the battery down a little bit. You want to try and match the voltages pretty close. First thing you're going to do is take these ends off. All right, now both these end caps are loose. You can see the cells are wrapped inside of there. So I'm going to pull this away. And this is just a, like a rubberized glue in there. This is where we're going to use that plastic knife. I'm not going to do it holding it like this because it's really hard, but we're just going to get that rubberized glue out of there. Okay, now that I've got them all broken loose, we're going to need to loosen up these two screws. Okay, and here's where we need to start being careful because we don't want to short out these wires on the case. So I'm going to pull them straight and see what we got. See how they've got glue covering these to help keep them from shorting? When I solder, these are just paper towels that I've soaked with water. This is the one I'm going to be using to cool things off. This is the one I'm going to be using to clean my solder tip. So we definitely want to keep these from touching. Now you want your, your soldering iron to be at least a 60 watt soldering iron because we need to make quick work of this. Hey, look at there, like butter. You got a good one, it's like butter. We're done. I'm just going to use a little masking tape and put over this end. It's just easier to get off. I'll double it up. All right, now let's get the other side. Here's where we need our razor. We got to cut away this plastic here. All right, here we go. Let's get it off. That's it. So let's not worry. Let's not freak out. We can just stick them back in there. I'm a little surprised that they came out that easy. But they're going in stiff, so I don't foresee them moving. Let's get this other side taped up. Now we are ready to slide the battery out, and can you guess which way we're going to slide it? Now it's a tight fit, so we're gonna, I'm going to push on this end to try and get it to come out this end. You don't want to pull on any of these wires at all. See, and here it comes. It's coming out pretty easy. Now this end, we don't want to disconnect any of this stuff. Let's just go like this, stick it in there, and pull it through. Nice and easy. 
and there it is. You might want to remember which way this goes in. Let's just put a little piece of tape on it. All right, I know we're gonna have to go back a little ways. So, I'm gonna guess I've done this before. It's gonna be about, oh, a third of the way in. And we're gonna go straight across. And don't worry, if you use just the tip, you're not gonna short anything out. And go straight across. Okay, and now we're gonna cut right here. Be very careful. Don't get this in too far, because there's a BMS right there. Once again, you don't want to short anything out. This end, I'm just going to go like this, just so I can grab a hold of it. We've gone down as far as we need to go. I'm going to save this and set it aside. All right, now the other side. We're going to do the same thing. Try and cut a line straight across. All right, now see these? You don't want to put anything, drop anything metal on there, or anything like that. You want to be very careful. And take this, set it aside. And now look what we've got here, guys. How nice is that? We've got an open Rotofit 14 cells. If I forgot to mention this earlier, you need kind of a skinny shaft Phillips screwdriver. And I think there was only two, one on each side. And then we're gonna take out the other one on this side. Now, very important, these are going to slide in there, but you need to make sure you're putting them in the right way. This is very important. Make sure that the negative is with a negative and the positive is with a positive. This is extremely, extremely important. Take your time and don't start just flooding them in there. Okay, so this first one, I see the positive is up, so I'm going to put the positive up. Boom. The next one, the negative is up. So I'm gonna put the negative up. Boom. The next one, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, all the way down. I remember this last one's a pain in the ass. There we go. Not too bad. Double check, triple checking. All right, now I'll let the soldering begin. Now these, it's convenient. They have the strips going all the way over to the end one. So we don't need to cut those strips. The other one I did have to cut those, but this is actually quite convenient. If you just have these brass strips, that's fine. You could use uh, nippers like this and cut a piece and lay it in there and use this to do it. Even if you had some thin copper wire like a, like an 18 gauge wire here, you could use that as long as it doesn't stick up too high. You could use that too, snip off a piece and use that. I've got nickel strip, so I'm going to use that. I'm gonna cut just a small piece, just enough to go in between. All right, let's get soldering. I'm just gonna take some flux. I'm gonna put it on my plate. So I just have a bunch on my plate. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on each one. I've got my wet rag or wet paper towel ready. I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Now this is gonna be kind of tough because these are sitting, this one doesn't quite go the distance. I don't like that. You don't want the, uh, solder to go down in that. Let's get this up here. All right. Cool it off as quick as you can. You'll notice how this one doesn't have anything connecting to it, but these two are connected, these two are connected, these two are connected. Where you see them connected like that, we need to do the same. We're gonna get safe right now. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go like this. Now, we can see, visually see, they're connected. Put this one there.
Okay, now that we got this side all done, we can cover it up so we don't have any accidents. I think this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. I'm gonna use some clear tape for this. We don't wanna build up thickness. So it's gotta slide in that case. All right, now that we got it clean, there isn't any metal stuff, wires or anything laying around. We're gonna flip it over and do the other side. All right, I just finished up this side and it looks really good, so I'm gonna put this back on. The sticky green felt paper, insulation paper. Slip it back on exactly where it was. Tape this baby back up. All right, looks excellent. So now we're gonna slip it back in that case. We're just putting it back in the way it was. Just like this. Just wanna take your time putting it in because it's a tight fit. So it's even Stevens. And I think we might as well get this one end put back together. We're gonna make sure we'll stick these wires through the hole. Tuck these in like it, flat in like it was. We're just gonna make sure these covers fit on. Beautiful. See this one didn't wanna close all the way, so we need to get it so it will close all the way. Let's just put a couple screws in. And that one can still shut all the way. I'm gonna put some hot glue in here where that rubber stuff is, kinda, to do the same thing. That should be good. All right. So now, put this back the way it was, and we're gonna screw everything down on this side because this side is officially done once we get them all started which they are you can start tightening them down all right now it's time to glue the other side just about there now it's time for these wires here. If you forgot to mark these like I did, the white goes to the number two and the red goes to the number one and nothing goes to number three. Almost helps to have two people for this job. I've got this little helping hand here I'm gonna use. Don't wanna screw up now, we've gone this far. These wires are so close together. I'm gonna try and make it tougher to have a boo-boo. Definitely don't wanna to touch these wires. This is where it gets serious. Serious. Here we go. Let's just goob this up, goofy goober style. Remember not to spark it now with that metal tip on the glue gun. We've been perfect so far. We wanna keep it up. Give that glue time to solidify. Okay, now we're gonna put this back in here. This is a pretty obvious thing, but that little hole there is where this, this goes right there. So, we gotta get these nuts on the back. Okay, as you can see, I've got it in there. And just like them, I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and put glue around these nuts so that if this thing has to be taken off for some reason, you might be able to get it off without having to take this whole cover off. All right, there we go. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is put this cover on and guess what, we're done. You now have a 15.6 amp hour battery. It's what I like to call a sleeper battery. So there you go. You now have a 15.6 amp hour battery. Let's put it in and see how it works. Put 
power on, power on, right on my friends, right on.